Well, hey everyone, didn't expect everybody to be in the chat. <laughs> Hello. So again, let me know if you can hear me and see me because I was having some problems with my software uh, when I was just getting ready to go live. So let me know down in the comments if you can hear and see me okay. Hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Hope my microphone is working. My computer completely shut down. So I hope everything looking and sounding great. <laughs> That's good to, good to know. Just when you think you get something figured out, your computer completely shuts down. Uh, I think I just confused my software. Yay, glad you guys are all here. You can hear and see. Wonderful, and I should have been checking the comments before I even started. It looks like you guys were waiting here for me. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Great. And of course, I don't have a countdown like I did before. Actually, what kind of messed me up was I was trying to do a really cool screen with some music to my countdown. I did that, and then my computer says, nope. I didn't want to do that today, so it shut down and I had to completely restart everything. So, yeah, now I'm back. <laughs> so, okay, great. I'm glad you guys are all here this morning. So, a little bit of a heads notice, not a lot. It was kind of, again, a last minute decision. I definitely do not really plan in advance. It's just kind of when I'm in the mood for it, pretty much. But I did try and send out a newsletter. Um, to let you know so if you are a subscriber to my newsletter which i should have linked down below in the video description otherwise i do have links on my blog uh, i send out newsletters when i try to plan to go live so i did send one out really quick this morning everything's good wonderful and i got my hair cut so i'm even i don't have sprouts everywhere like i did last time <laughs> got everything kind of toned down a little bit so good morning, good morning, everyone. Well, uh, one of the reasons I decided to jump on today was I don't think I've ever done um, coloring in any of my lives, Copic coloring. It's something I tend to mm, stray away from just because everybody's different and there's a lot to it. There's classes out there that you can take from some instructors that really have a great base knowledge of coloring. I've taken some classes and then I've just kind of developed my own take on it, my own style to it. So I thought, well, let's just jump in and do some coloring today. And it just kind of worked out because I saw that Simon Says Stamp is having a sale on Copic markers today. So I'm going to use my Copic markers to do some coloring. And if you have questions, I'm going to try and catch them. I don't know if I'll get to finish a card today. I just thought I would pop in and do some coloring. Uh, I do have a few supplies listed in the video description below um, of things that I am hoping to use on my card and then I'll have to fill in the rest later because really all I did was pick out my stamp set and I'm just kind of going to wing it from there. So I'm uh, going to pop over here, look at my comments really quick. Good morning, good morning. Yes, Vicki. So... I never got a chance to thank you on Instagram like I wanted to, uh, but I have to show you guys. So I'm going to go down to my tabletop here. Um, <laughs> I got to do everything manually now because uh, my buttons are all messed up. So let's see. There we go. Okay. So I need to show you guys something. I got this amazing tumbler from Vicky. It is the coolest thing brought the biggest smile to my face when I got this. She's done these before and she kind of revamped it a little bit and look at that. I'm so excited. It is so cool to see me on there and I mean to be among all of these rock stars on this mug. Come on. That's like Hall of Fame right there. <laughs> so thank you Vicki. I love this. I have not used it yet because it's like a prized possession, you know? I had it actually um, sitting on top of my shelf so I could just look at it. <laughs> so thank you so much. I love this. This is amazing. I love it. 
Okay, so uh, as I have my energy drink over on the side. <laughs> But I decided today I wanted to, this is the stamp set I started out with when I was um, kind of thinking about what I wanted to do or what I wanted to color. I found this adorable birds set from Simon Says Stamp. This is called Seasons Tweetings. Adorable. I love puns. And I thought these birds would be perfect because they're not super detailed. They're not really tiny. They're not really big. Um, so I thought they would be just a really great starting point. I have stamped them out and colored them a little bit before I was kind of playing this probably a few weeks ago. Uh, so I thought, well, I'm going to start. And I actually decided I was going to do this bird here because he looks like a cardinal. And I just love cardinals. So, and I know my mom does too. I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm giving her this card because then if I don't get it in the mail, I might get in trouble. But... <laughs> I mainly am picking this bird because I did think of my mom, um, but it also could work for a blue jay. That would be really gorgeous, actually, to color it as a blue jay. But all of these birds, you know, some of these have little hats on them. This one's going to have a scarf. Uh, this guy's got a little hat. You also have some holly on here and some snowflakes, candy canes. I mean, it's such a huge set and so many fillers. And then, of course, you have your sentiments. Now, another thing that I adore is having coordinating dies for my sentiments, which, yes, I know, die sets can be super pricey, but I love it. I I will pay for a coordinating die any day, any day, because I love having coordinating dies. I love having dies for my sentiments. Now, this one, yes, um, I do want to let you know, Simon Says Stamp I did send this one to me, I would have bought it anyway. To be honest, there's just something about it. It's birds. It's so cute. It doesn't have to be Christmas. It can go into the winter months, which if you live in like my kind of area in Wisconsin, <laughs> you're going to see winter till like at least March. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I do plan on using the coordinating die to die cut out my bird. And I think I'm going to use the season's tweetings, which to be honest, one of the reasons that I picked that particular sentiment is because it has a coordinating die. So I love that. And you can see we also have dies for the snowflakes and the little hearts even. So yay. Yes. Yay for dies. Now, a couple other things that, here, let me see if I can do, <clears throat> um, let's see. Let me try something here. Whoops. Nope. That's not what I wanted. Okay. We're not going to mess around with buttons because it's all messed up today. So that is that. And a couple other things, if I get to make a card, is the Branching Corner Holly. So I did list this one down below in the video description as well. One of the reasons that I picked it is because it is the perfect size. It's actually one whole die. This whole thing is a die. You're going to cut out two branches so they... they kind of have a little place for your bird to nest. And then you also have some additional pieces here that you can use to build up your images. So I liked that. If I get to finish my bird, I'm going to use that for my bird, bird to perch on. And then uh, maybe I'll bring in one of my favorite dies ever, which is the Arches Infinity die from Hero Arts. Um, I would use that to create a window and uh, yeah, that's about as far as I got as far as as far as picking out um, what I was going to do today. So I will jump in and I think I'll just get in and start coloring. So if you guys are interested in any Copic markers, uh, I think Copic refills are on that sale today. If you need to go through your Copic stash, I know I do. I Yes, I have Olo markers and I also have a ton of uh, Copic markers. I actually have the whole collection and I still use them just because I have the Olos. I like, I like to mix and match. So I need to go through my stash as well, but this is a great time to be stocking up on your Copic markers and your Copic refills. So, uh, I will start out by stamping out my image. Now, a lot of people ask me about cardstock. What kind of cardstock do I like to use for coloring? And to be honest, I, I switch it up 
Uh, right now, my kick is using Expressit cardstock. Expressit cardstock is um, pretty smooth. It's a fair. It's a really smooth cardstock. There's not a lot of oh, what do I want to say? You don't always feel like the the fibers. I was gonna say threads, fibers of the cardstock. It's a nice smooth cardstock, great for blending on. So right now I'm on that kick. I have done it with 80 pound cardstock. I've done it with 100 pound cardstock. Um, I just, right now I'm really on this Express It kick. So that is what I'm going to start out with now. Let me grab my Misty so I can stamp it out. You just did your maintenance. I need to do that too, Vicki. My, some of my markers are so dirty in the caps and I just it bothers me when it's that dirty so I need to clean it I need to figure out what's dry and you know just what needs to be replaced so if you have a dye you're more than likely to use the stamps exactly it I totally agree Kenzie I am the same way especially when it comes to sentiments I am more likely to use that sentiment when I have the die because then I can die cut it out and place it wherever I want on my card front. So yes, I am exactly the same way. So let me grab my cute little bird here. So how is everyone doing today? What do I see? I have at least my, my stream deck looks like it's still working. <laughs> There's about 89, 90 people here today. That's great. I mean, for last minute. I oh my fridge kicked in so yeah we'll have that background noise I know people always ask me if I can come up with a schedule <laughs> if we're doing lives yeah no no not really a schedule mine's more of um, last minute where I can kind of fit it in between working on assignments and stuff like that so it's just kind of when I when I feel like it which isn't the best answer but Okay, you also, when you're going to color with any type of alcohol marker, you want to use an alcohol-friendly ink. And there are lots of companies that make an ink that is alcohol-friendly. The Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink, Lawn Fawn, uh, Gina K, Hero Arts, you know, a lot of those. MFT, I used theirs for a long time too. You, it usually will say on the back of the packaging or on the back of it, if it is alcohol marker friendly. So, well, hey, Miss, Miss Kathy Z. Nice of you to pop in. I was just telling them I was having some technical difficulties today. Surprise, surprise. With my software, it completely shut down my computer. So, I'm hoping everything is working. It took away all my overlays. So, no, no pretty covers today on my, my live. Hi, Risa. Glad you guys are popping in. Now with this particular image, it does have uh, some finer lines, so I don't wanna really push too hard, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply some pressure. And I will just make sure that's tucked down in that bottom corner and stamp again. It happens to you all the time. Yeah, I was, thought I was doing really good, but uh, apparently I did something that Ecamm did not like, and, <laughs> and then my computer didn't like it, so I was like, well, okay, fine. It's, it's all in the practice. I forgot to wet my stamp chamois, so I'm going to have to have to find, I don't even think I have any cleaner left. Okay, we're just going to have to leave that stamp dirty for now, because... I forgot to wet my stamp chamois. So I'll just try and clean that off. Hello, Mary Ann. Thank you, Kathy. I'm going to pop that back in. I have to clean up as I go. It's kind of what takes me so long, I think, when it comes to stuff. 
You need to get the intense black. Yes, it's a great ink. But also, like I said, a lot of companies make a really great black ink too. So if you don't have this one, if you have maybe Lawn Fawn or MFT, um, I don't use the, uh, what was it, Memento black ink as much as I used to. That's what I started with. Um, but I just found it's not as, it's not as black um, as some of the other ones. So that's why I don't use Memento anymore. But, but that does work as well. So I am going to hit this with my heat tool to make sure that this ink is dry because I don't want to smear it. I stamped it twice. This is the Express It uh, blending cardstock, so it's smooth. So I just want to make sure I heat set this so nothing smears. It is an adorable stamp set. I love birds during the holidays. You have Memento. Yeah, I don't use that one much anymore. It is what I started with. It's a, I guess I would say a great starter. Um, but if you were to, you know, if you have a few different black ink pads and you were to just stamp them all out, like using a thick sentiment, like you could even use Season's Greetings and just stamp it all out in some of the different blacks, you're going to see what a difference that is. Um, I can't remember Memento anymore because I, I don't have it. But you're going to see the difference in the blacks. No no black is ever the same between companies. They all kind of just have a little bit different, I don't know if I want to say undertone to it. But, you know, you only notice that if you have different kinds of blacks on your project. Whereas, I stamp this in black. So if I'm going to stamp anything else in black, I'm going to use that same intense black. Because then everything will be consistent. You're not going to notice anything. Okay, let me move some stuff around here. You are just reading Liz's comments. Oh, thank you, Liz. Yes, catch the replay. It'll be around. It may take a little bit to process, but yes, definitely the replay will be here. So I'm going to zoom in, maybe. There we go. Let's see. Okay, and then I'm going to grab some markers. I keep all of my Copic markers on a rolling cart so I can just wheel it over. And I, <laughs> I apologize. I know I have been asked for this a lot and I keep saying I'm going to do it and I never do. So I apologize for that. But um, I, I would save a lot of uh, Copic marker combinations from Instagram and Pinterest. And then I seen this sort of like this from Alberto. Um, he would do little dots and write down what his color combinations were for his pictures and his colorings, which he is amazing. Um, and I decided to create myself a little cheat sheet. So I have, uh, this is actually just 80 pound Nina white cardstock that I trimmed into half sheets. And then um, this way I have like all my R's. I have all my V's, you know, so I have all these different color combinations that I can refer back to that I keep in this little pocket. So I always kind of just pull this out. Then I don't have to pull up my phone. I don't have to go searching for a color combination. I just, I keep this with my markers. And yeah, it's it's been quite helpful when I want reds, pinks, you know. So anytime I come across a new uh, color combination, I just pull this out. Let me peek over here. You have a Memento and Stays on Black. Now, Stays on Black, I I don't believe that's really for Copic markers. That's more of a permanent ink for stamping. Um, I know I used to use stays on for like stamping on cellophane and things like that or acetate. Um, you just want to make sure it's something that is alcohol marker friendly. Okay, whoop. Hold on, that question was passed. Have I used the Olo markers? And if so, which do I like better, Olo or Copics? So yes, I do have all of the Olos. I bought them when they first came out. I bought the whole set. I like them both. Um, I am more familiar with Copic markers um, than I am with the Olos, mainly because that's just, that's what I started with. That's what I learned with. And I can, 
I can grab the old oil. So yeah, like I said, I didn't know if I was going to get to a card today. I will get to coloring, but there is a lot when it comes to alcohol markers. Um, let me just pop in here real quick. There is... Okay, so yes, I do have Olo markers and the Copic markers. So let's just grab this. So obviously right away, you, whoop, back out. You can see a difference. Um, Copic Sketch. So these are the Copic Sketch that happen to have that oval barrel and Olos have the round barrel. Now, when I bought these, um, this is actually the same color through and through, but you can take this and you can put a different color on the other end. So you could have, you know, a 1.2 or a 1.4. I don't remember if those are actual numbers, but you can do that. Mine just happened to be all one marker. The other thing I like is that there is a stopper on here. So if I were to, you know, throw that off on the side, it's not going to roll off of my desk. There is like this little nick here. It's like a little stopper. So it's not going to go all over the place unless I really chuck it across the room. Oh, let me get in here real quick. <clears throat> okay. So um, that's kind of obviously a main sight dif visual difference. They still have a numbering system on the end of the marker. You can already see if I were to line them up like this, there's a significant difference here. Okay, so these are just the outside visual visual differences now they do have a little bit different of a numbering system and i'm not going to go into like heavy specifics about it but it's it's fairly similar uh, let me grab one second where's one um okay let's do this so you have a g 1.4 and a g 1.7 so yeah i'm probably zoomed in too much um, these two would go together. It might take some work to get those two to blend because you can see there's a, a drastic difference there, but these would go, these two would go together. So that's kind of how their numbering system works. Of course, you can always mix and match, try different combinations. That's the part I haven't quite gotten to yet. Now the Olo markers, I will say their flow system is totally different as well. Uh, don't. I'm not going to totally pull that apart, but if you look on their website, they give some major, major visuals, whereas this whole barrel, it's a plastic barrel in there that is filled with ink. When you have Copic markers, there's like some sort of lining in here, and then that's with the ink. So a lot of times your ink is soaking into that lining and you're not you're not getting a full use of that ink. So you're, it's almost kind of a waste in a sense. Um, tips, you know, we've heard a lot of people, I've had experience with tips crystallizing or drying out or getting yucky, things like that. Um, I have a lot of those too. And from what, I, what I'm hearing about that is if your caps are not sealed, if there's even just a hairline crack, that's what's going to cause that. Um, I have not so far. I mean, I bought these right when they came out. What is that? Maybe a year or two now. Um, I have not had any tips crystallize or dry out. So that's the other thing. Like I said, also the flow is just very different. It flows very easily out of the marker, which is kind of one of the reasons that I have switched to express it for right now. Um, I just find I don't know. There's just something about it that I find easier to work with Express It right now. And if I were to grab 80 pound cardstock, which I have done with Olos, it tends to sink into the 80 pound cardstock more and then spread out. Because you, uh, if you look at watercolor, you put watercolor down and it, and it spreads out. It's kind of the same thing with alcohol markers. You know, if you only have 80 pound, practice it. You can you know, learn to color with that. It's not that you can't do it. There's just a different learning curve to it. Okay, so uh, as far as which one I prefer, I like them both. Um, I do like the design and how they work. I do like Olo's concept better, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to use my Copics. So uh, topics, if caps crack, Blick will replace them. Even if, 
Vicky, even if you didn't buy it from Blick, like I've bought my markers from all over the place. So that's interesting to know. <clears throat> um, let's see. Don't color enough to convince yourself. Yes, it's it's an investment. I have heard of the oh hoo hoo. Is that how that is? <laughs> markers. Um, I don't know. You know, Zan, I've heard a lot of good things about those markers. I've I've contemplated investing them just to try it out, but. Yeah, if that's, and it is, it's totally on budget too. If that's what you can manage right now, there's nothing wrong with that. There's apps. I've seen some amazing coloring using those markers. So it's not always just about the marker uh, if you buy from them. Got it. Um, didn't do a bad job at all. Got it. Okay. I, I have not tried the Ohuhu. I mainly have uh, Copics, Olos. I do have Tri-Blend markers. I think that's Spectrum Noir. I do like those. Um, I think they are a great starting point for people. Hi, Lynn. Um, I've done some coloring with the Tri-Blends, but I think those are a really great starting point, especially if you're not going to color a ton because uh, tri-blends are not refillable. Once it dries out or you used all your ink, it's gone. So uh, there's that. So yes, okay, back to my poor little cardinal. How much do I think? <laughs> a lot, a lot, Kenzie. I was buying my Copics, um, honestly, way back before they became so popular. Um, with coloring and I was spending they were heavily marked up um, now you can get really good deals on them and places have sales on them we will not talk about <laughs> how much I've spent on Copic markers oh yes Ulta New has some too I have a couple of their sets a couple but I don't um I, I tend to stick with what I'm familiar with <clears throat> okay so my little cardinal here, uh, let's see, I can't remember, I'm not going to pull up a picture right now, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to color his body red, and then these face and belly here, these parts, I think I'll do black. Don't know if that's exactly how it is, but that's what I'm going to do. Yes, exactly, it's just paper. Although, I actually, I had placed an order with Simon Says Stamp that's coming soon. I ordered some more Express It cardstock, so I was starting to run out. So... Now, I know I have some issues with a couple of my reds, so my luck, I'm gonna pick the one that has issues. So I have to improvise. I also um, have, so I had mentioned I keep my markers in a cart that I can kind of move around, and I found these cups. I have no idea where I found these cups. Let me back up, since I'm kind of in, I don't usually go into this much detail, so this is also kind of nice on, on coming live. Um, I can answer a lot of those questions. So I found these cups, maybe Dollar Tree, not really sure. They're not tapered too bad at the end. So I can fit a lot of markers in here. So I have like all of my R's in here. I have a cup with all of my BG's. I love this. It, it Yes, I kind of have to hunt a little bit. Um, I had a really nice marker stand that I bought uh, from a store that was getting rid of them. And they had all their nice individual slots. It honestly just took up too much room. So I keep them in cups now. So I can grab this. And let's see. I think let's start with, you know, let's go over here. Let's start with an R59. Did I grab an R? Yeah. Why do I have two R59s? Uh-oh. I have two R's. I have to figure out which one's the good one. I bet I rebought it because a tip probably went bad. 35, 32, and am I missing my R39? I wonder if I trashed it because it was crap. I bet I did because I don't see it. Darn it. Yeah, see, that was my problem, I think, because I, okay, we're going to redo this. I think I need an R39. So good, good thing that Simon is having a sale, because I need to go buy a marker. So let's do R20. 
29. 27. Can't see. 27, 24, and R. Sorry, I'll look at your comments in a sec here. I can't see. Okay. <clears throat> Good morning, Annie. Hello. Do I have those cards? I do not. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm, I always say I'm going to take a picture and post them somewhere, and I always forget. So I'm, I'll try to make a note to get that done this week. Um, are you supposed to store them on their sides? I don't really know for sure with those if you are. Um, I've seen a lot of crafters have them store up and down. So I don't know if that's like a deal breaker on them. My my Copics are up and down and my Olo markers are up and down too. And I have not had any problems. You know, the ink might go to one end. Well, in a Copic marker... The ink will go to one end over the other. So that can make a difference. In my Olo marker, it's not going to make a difference. Yeah, I've, I've had my markers like that up and down for years. And I think Jen Shirkus has hers like that maybe up and down. Um, she She's a good uh, Copic marker guru too. So she, I haven't had any problems with mine being stored that way. I need to grab a scratch piece of paper. Not really scratch, but all those can be stored either way. Perfect. <clears throat> okay, I need to check my mark. Oh, that's a good one. I wonder if that's a new one. Okay, I think that one's kind of icky. So I'm going to put that off on the side. So we're going to go with that one. I'm just testing to make sure that my markers are good before I start coloring. Oh, see my, okay, R24. I need to see if I have a refill for that one. So give me one second. I'm going to run and see if I have a refill for R24. So one minute. All right, so I do have a refill for it. Sorry, look at this, guys. A half hour in, and I still haven't started coloring yet. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get this refilled so I can start coloring. I can find my little tweezers. Where are they? Sorry about that, guys. Give me one second here. Oh, there they are. Found them. Okay. So I got these. I don't remember where I got them from. Probably, like, wherever you buy your Copic markers, they have these little gripper tweezers. And you can kind of see here that the end of my tip is kind of lighter than the rest of it. And that's a good indication that your marker is drying out, just so you know. So I'm taking both ends off, and I'm going to the chisel end because I don't use that end. And then I'm going to just take my grippers and just pull that out. And this is the old Copic refills. I'm not going to measure or weigh. I'm just going to dump some in. Oop, making a mess. I'm just going to add a bunch of drops. And then I can pop that back in. Get everything closed up. Thank you, Janet. What I don't like about Copics is the shape of the barrel. It's uncomfortable. Yeah, they're kind of, it's different. Uh, which cap goes where? Usually the cleaner cap goes on the chisel end because I don't use it. Okay, so now this, now I am going to set this off on the side and I'm going to leave it side to side so that it kind of disperses evenly. 
Okay. So now I should be ready to color. So yeah, I hope some of this is helpful to you guys. I know that was a lot of babbling, but um, you know, it's, it's a lot of information that I, just, I don't include in my video half the time. So if you guys have any questions, just give me a holler. You almost missed my life. Hi, Heidi. It's okay. I've been doing a lot of babbling. I haven't even started working on a project yet. So <laughs> let me zoom in a little bit there. My poor naked nails. <clears throat> okay, so I do have a four color combination. Um, I do like to usually stick with at least three. In this case with reds, I do tend to go with four because I really like a lot of contrast. So I'm going to start coloring. I might kind of get a little in, involved and, and not look up as much. So if you do have a question, just type question in capital letters and I'm gonna try and catch it. Oh, I needed my caffeine. So what I will do is I'm gonna start out with my darkest color, adding in shadows. Uh, a lot of times people will go in, hi Donna. Uh, a lot of times people will start with their lightest color to map in their shadows. I believe that's just called mapping. I don't, I just jump right in. What I do look for, what I kind of analyze first when I'm going to color is where do I want my light source to come from and what is overlapping another object? So looking at this bird, uh, he is facing to the right. So by looking at it, I am going to have my light source, we'll say my pin cushion here is my sun. So this is my sun. So the light is going to hit here first and then just get a little darker on the back. So that's the frame of mind I'm going to keep in. And you know, when I started Copic coloring first or alcohol markers in general, I literally would take something and place it where I want my sun to be. So it helped me visually figure out where that light is coming from. So you can kind of see, you know, obviously if you move your sun to the top, the light's going to be coming where it hits his head first and it'll get darker on the bottom. So that's an option. Um, you move it over here. The light is going to be going from here to there. So sometimes it helps to have a visual like that. So I'm probably just going to, you know, about about there ish um, and it's the same thing when it comes to the scarf you know where is it going to hit the scarf and I'm probably going to have some shadows behind the scarf so uh, you know you kind of just sit look at it analyze it what is overlapping also get a very good idea of what the lines are for instance I am just noticing here now that there is this extra loop in the scarf I didn't notice that at first so I'm taking into account that that is part of the scarf and not the bird. So little, little things there to help. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get coloring. I'm going to start by adding a shadow. And I'm not going to get super detailed. I'm not going to add tons of feathering details to the bird. I'm just going to draw a line to add that shadow. A little bit there and you know I think I'm just gonna stop right there for right now because I don't like to um, spread myself out too much I want to fill this in while it's still wet while my ink is still wet and then I'll kind of decide if I need to add some more shadows I went over my darkest line and then blend it out just a little bit. This is the R27 now. So this is what they usually would consider, I think, like a mid-tone. I kind of have two mid-tones, honestly. So I'm gonna blend over that last color, blend it out. This one's probably gonna get a lot of my mid-tone. My highlight, I really only want a little bit of highlight. Bring that up a little bit. 
and then my lightest color, which because, oh, still doesn't look very good. We'll see if this, uh, not a fan of this R24 right now. I don't know. Did I grab the right refill? It doesn't look right. Yeah, I did. I don't know. He doesn't look quite right. But, anyway. Maybe I'll try an R22. Hmm. Anyway. <laughs> I'll just keep it like that for now. Maybe I'll come back and add little bit more shadow. Do that. I can get really carried away with shadows. Just got to be careful with reds. Reds tend to bleed. They're just a very strong color. I don't know. I might get rid of that R24. It's just not... It's not sitting well with me. I'm not liking it. I don't know what happened there. Okay. I don't want to go over it too many times because then it will definitely start to bleed outside of the edge. So I'm going to just stop while I'm ahead. I think I'm going to put my R24 away for now. Just not liking that R24. So there I have, um, it's not as drastic of a difference and it's not fancy by any means. I just have a darker area on here to kind of show that I have some shadow. So now I'm going to move up to the head, add that darker color back there. I'm going to bring out these little points a little bit. Fill that in and kind of come forward some more. And then my last one. Uh, okay, so I'm missing a line there. So I kind of have to do it myself. Oh, let's see. Let's do that maybe. Yeah, that'll work. I'm okay with that. Fewer strokes the way to avoid bleed. Um, yeah, pretty much. If you go over it too many times, yes, you're going to get some bleed. So if, you know, strokes, I guess it depends on how you're coloring. If you just keep coloring and coloring, then yes. When I, when you say strokes, what I think of strokes is, well, that's flicking, but yeah, the more you go over it, the more it's going to end up bleeding. So if you can get a smooth blend on your first go over, perfect, great. A lot of times just give the ink a chance to sink into the cardstock before you go over it again because it may end up being just perfectly fine. So let's see, that's my wing. Okay, now I need to do his body. So now the wing is obviously overlapping his body. So I am going to add this is my darkest. This is R59. What did I do? Uh-oh. I screwed up my caps. Hold on. R59. R. Uh-oh. Hold on. 39. Messed up my caps. Whoopsies. Okay, so apparently I'm coloring with an R59. That's okay. It'll work. I'm going to add a strong shadow line right there. And I'll add a little bit of one behind the scarf. And I'll go wait on that part. R29. Go over that dark color I just did. Blend that out. And then the R27. And fill that in. There we go. I'm good with that. 
Uh, what is this? Oh, Kenzie. <laughs> Thank you for stopping in. You used to color like, is that flicking? Yup. Flick, yes, just keep practicing. Exactly. Keep practicing. Thank you, Heidi. All right, so I'm done with my reds. So I'm going to go ahead and cap this back up. Hopefully I matched up my caps right this time. R27 and R29. Okay, so next I'm going to go ahead and color in the belly. So where did I put my red markers? Did I put them back? I did. All right, so let's grab my cup here. Now um, I'm coloring, I'm coloring black, uh, but I don't ever just go in with black. I know my camera's kind of freaking out there for a second. I'm gonna do grays and then kind of build up the darkness of it. So let's see, what do I want to do? Uh, question where can you go to get classes on shading I uh, took classes from Kitten Clowder she does a very very thorough job um, and you have to give yourself some grace because her pictures um, her projects her things every month they, they teach a lot of techniques and they um, she's just she's very 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 thorough I know when I started those classes, I was very disgusted in myself, but you have to just keep going and just remember that you're you're going to get better each time you do them. Now, those are paid classes. You pay monthly. They're, I think they're a very reasonable price because she gives you an instruction booklet and the images a lot of times are free, but there are also some really great coloring artists out there you know Kelly Taylor is a very good at coloring and um, you know teaches the coloring on her channel so that's there's a lots of great people out there on YouTube but I started out and I still do pay for kit and clowder classes I haven't actually completed one in a long time but I still have them uh, what to use if you don't have Copics uh, any alcohol marker, so you could use Spectrum Noir has alcohol markers, tri-blend markers. Um, if you're looking at an alcohol marker, Ohuhu off of Amazon is a cheaper version. There's Olos, uh, lots of different alcohol markers. If you don't have any alcohol markers, you could just do colored pencils. Uh, you could do water coloring. Yes, Christina's amazing at coloring. Yep. Oh yes, Sandy Allnock. Yes, does amazing. Absolutely. So lots of them out there. I am definitely not a professional. I kind of, uh, I consider those guys professionals. I just wing it. And I'll explain what I'm doing here as far as picking my color. Okay, there, I found it. So when I'm going to color something dark, again, I went to three shades and I'm okay, my blending is going to work by skipping a number. So I have N8, N6, and N4. I know these are going to blend pretty well together because there's only, it's every other. You know, if I start spanning the distance, if I were to do N8 to N4, I know I'm gonna struggle coloring that. I'm gonna have to really work at blending those two together. So that's why I like to have three because I know this is going to work pretty seamlessly for me. And there's neutral, so this is a uh, neutral gray. There's toner gray. Uh, there's also cool grays. So they just have a little bit of a different tone to them. If I missed any coloring or questions before I get into it, you're learning with tri-blends right now. Yes, they are great because a lot of times that one marker will contain the three different levels that you need to get a great blend. So yes, I do highly recommend the tri-blends if you're going to start out. Yeah, Kelly is a definitely amazing. Oh, Stampin' Up! has alcohol markers. You need colors that erase mistakes. 
Oh, thank you, Liz. <laughs> Vanilla Arts. Yes. Oh, that's right. I, I have seen. I think I've seen that YouTube channel. Very good. And yeah, there's lots of them out there. Okay, so I am working on coloring the face and the belly. So I'm going to start with my N8. And again, I'm going to put my darker color off to the left. A little bit there. A bit of a shadow there on the other side of the scarf. Yeah, it, everyone's got their own kind of style. You know, I know some people don't like just drawing a line like this, but I like it. Sometimes I'll add flicks depending on the image that I'm coloring. You know, nobody is nobody is wrong. It's just their way of coloring because we are card makers. Uh, we're, we're card makers, you know, these are going on cards and yes, they can be artwork in themselves. But that's not why I'm doing it. If I wanted to create artwork, um, you know, with my markers, like in that sense, I, I wouldn't be putting it on a card. I'd be making it to hang up, which you can hang up cards. Um, but I, I don't, um, I don't judge myself anymore. I used to. I used to really compare myself to other people that color and I quit doing that and it makes me a whole lot happier when I color. Do I envy them? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, have you seen Alberto? He is phenomenal. But that's not me. That That's his style. He is amazing at it and they're gorgeous. Um, but I like this. This is what I enjoy. So, um, what is this? You really need a class when the color to see the marks and objects. Oh, like your, you see the marks in your objects. Like you can see the lines from your markers. Is that what you mean, Christine? Yeah, sometimes on mine I can too. A lot of times I need to just walk away. And when you're coloring, you're really up close to your project. If you were to step away from it, back away from it, you're not going to see those lines. You take a picture of it, most times nobody's going to see those lines. But I know what you mean. I, I get like that too. You just have to give yourself grace and you have to practice. And my lightest color here. My N4, I actually do use it quite a bit, so it's, um, I think it's going to need a refill. I was kind of waiting for that Simon Says Stamp Sale, because that's usually when I do all my refills and get the extra markers or, um, fix my markers, I should say, tips. So it's a good time to take advantage of that sale. I'll usually sit and I'll go through all of my markers and I just do all these, like, just streaks across the cardstock to see if I need a refill, if the tips are bad. Oh, I look at him. Learn the flicking technique. Yep, absolutely. What I recommend, uh, people ask me all the time, you know, what, what marker should I get? What should I start with? Which colors do I get? And my suggestion is you know, if you find a picture, if you find someone colored an image and you really like what they used, um, go to their blog or if they did a YouTube video, go to their YouTube channel and figure out or find out what colors they used and then buy those markers. That's what I would do. I, do not, I didn't do it the right way. I did not do mine the smart way when I was buying markers. Um, but, you know, if you... If you like that shade of red, if you like that black, well then, you know, find out which colors did I use for the red and black. And then that way, if you have this particular stamp set, if you have another bird stamp set, you can buy those particular colors and you can color your bird. So that's how I always suggest starting out if you're looking at coloring is just find an image you like, find out the colors that they used. You can also go to Pinterest and buy those particular colors. That, that's my suggestion. <clears throat> okay, so now um, 
what cardinals is it a yellow beak do they have yellow is it yellow or orange i always get it wrong let me know if that's yellow or orange So it looks like I'll just get through coloring today. <laughs> Yellow or orange. I'm going to work on a scarf. And I'm going to do a teal scarf. So pick out some teal colors I'm just waiting for the comments to pop in so you guys can let me know oh shoot is it a black beak really no is it orange you wish orange -ish. <laughs> okay I'll wait for more comments to pop in we'll see what majority is orange with a tip of yellow at the end god Let's see, 49, um, 45, orange, we're still with the orange, ow, okay, orange, I'll come back to the beak. Uh, teals, now, I will say I struggle the most with teal color combinations, which is the BG family for Copix, so I do recommend having some sort of... <laughs> Pamela uh, cheat sheet because I will never never remember the color combinations because they're kind of just weird honestly so for my scarf I'm going to use BG 49 45 and BG 11 so you guys are going with orange on that okay I have to go some oranges so let's start with my scarf here um I'm actually just going to cover color right over that little zigzag because I don't uh, feel like separating it. So let's just do these little pieces hanging down first. And then I'll come back with my other ones. <laughs> Good old Siri, huh? I don't have that turned on on my phone. My phone listens to me enough. So BGs can be kind of uh, stinkers to blend. And my BG 11. So that's going to give me quite the highlight. There we go. So then I'll come back. You pulled up photos. <laughs> okay, now with the scarf. And sometimes I will admit I struggle with scarves as far as where I want shadow areas to be. So here's my thought process on this. I am going to add a shadow underneath this top roll because it's overlapping. And this may not be right. This is just what I'm going to do. Uh, but I'm also going to add little flicks here from this side because that is in the back. Like I said, I don't always, I may not always color right, but, you know, it works. So then I'll fill that in. And I don't always have the right words to describe what I'm doing, to be honest. I know there probably could be shadows in here from the dips of the scarf. That's getting pretty technical. I'm not going to worry about it. And then the BG11. There. I think I'll go with that. That'll work for me. Good enough for me. So 
So like I said, I know just from pictures that I've seen and um, seeing how other people color is that I could probably, if I was really that particular about my coloring, you can see how the scarf is swooping. So there's probably like a shadow maybe right in here where it would dip in a little bit, but I'm not gonna get that technical. So I'm gonna just go with this. Now, um, see, I need to fix something with my camera. I'm noticing this lately is that this is really a very blue teal. When I come back to face, uh, face forward camera, I'll show it to you, but it's really a nice blue teal in my camera. It's registering as like a green teal and I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> so I don't know what's going up with how that, what's going on with my color grading, but, um, it's more of a blue teal. Because orange, red color is slightly different than the plumage. Um, sometimes you just want to color and not think so hard about all those shows. Exactly. And that is totally okay to do. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Uh, so orange, huh? We're going with orange. Oh, I'm so bad with oranges. I will say it is not my favorite shade to color with. Let's try. It's not very big either. Seven. Let's try seven and ten. All right, let's try this. So I'm going to try and finish this card up later today. I'm coming up on, oh, I'm over an hour now. Um, I'm going to finish this card up later today and I'll post my finished project. But what did you guys think of today? I mean, it was a lot of talking, obviously. What did you guys think? Are you okay with these kinds of, that actually works out really well, uh, lives where it's a lot of information, really? Were you guys okay with this? Do you want to see another coloring live? I'm going to show that one to you guys too because that doesn't register very well. <clears throat> so I will finish this off screen and I will definitely link later on uh, all the supplies I use, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to use that uh, branch. What was it called? Branching Corner Holly. And if you're catching this on replay, let me know too. What did you think of this? I know it was a lot of talking and probably more of where you would be interacting, but um, you love coloring lives. This was great. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate that. Love the beak. Great. So let's see. It looks like a... If I were to add this, I'm going to go side to side. So let's see what happens here. Yep, I'm side to side. I don't know how I did that, but <laughs> I do want to, my ear is popping again, uh, bring this, if you can see it over here. So I'm bringing this in front of my face. Now, if you're looking, that is way more bluish teal, okay, than it is on my downward facing screen. I don't know why it's doing that. See here, my tabletop down, it's more of a like minty green. I don't know. It's weird, but <laughs> it is what it is. I'll have to fix it at some point. So yeah, there is my bird. Now, um, if you are kind of popping in late here, this came from the, let me back that out a little bit. There we go. Uh, Seasons Tweetings stamp set from Simon Says Stamp is where this adorable cardinal came from. I'll finish off that card. Uh, they have a Copic sale going on right now, so I think it's 20% off of Copics. I have that linked down below in the video description and also the couple supplies that I use, like my cardstock, the stamp set, and I think I linked also the die that I plan on using. So I'm going to do that later on today and I'll post that finished project. So, uh, oh gosh, Suzanne, it is real. It's, it's so awful. I mean, I love going live, 
But man, the technical stuff behind it. You should see the like web of people that talk to each other about technical stuff. It is, it's one funny web is really what it is. Norway, hello. Um, Wilma says, I gave a lot of information and showed us techniques. Great. Talking to teach is great. Okay, good. I'm glad you guys, uh, yeah, minty green. I don't know. I'll have to play with it a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I'm glad, glad you guys like this. Do you realize I'm choosing you over Russell Brand? <laughs> well, thank you, Kenzie. I appreciate that. Um, I'm finishing up anyway, but yeah, I'm glad you guys like this and you know, I'll see how my schedule goes. Maybe I'll pop in tomorrow. I'm trying to get, um, used to these lives a little bit more, especially since I had technical issues today, but maybe I'll try and pop on tomorrow. I'm going to see how my work day goes, what I get done, but Maybe I'll come back and, and do some coloring if, um, well, what would you guys like to see? Do you want to see more Copics or uh, would you like to see, I can do Olo or we can do Tri-Blend. So, you know, let me know down in the um, comments what you would want to see me use. Or if you want to stick with Copics, we can do Copics again. And like I said, I'm not a professional. I'm just kind of um, coloring it the way I like to color. So maybe things help you along the way, but uh, yeah, let me know. I'm going to, let's see, how do I do this? There we are. <laughs> okay. So yeah, just keep me posted what kind of markers you'd like to see again. Um, I think I'll do some more coloring because there's always just so much you can talk about and maybe other people will pop in with some questions that weren't asked today. Uh, I can't promise. So uh, I will do a newsletter. I will let you know in the morning. So if you're not signed up for my newsletter yet, that should be linked down below in the video description. That'll give you the most up-to-date information. Olo, Copics, Olos, and Triblends. Oh boy. <clears throat> Coloring in general is great. Okay, I'll, I'll see what happens. So if you're watching the replay, let me know. Um, I do want to thank you guys so much for joining me today on this kind of last minute live. And if you're watching the replay, thank you so much for watching the replay. Uh, you can do more than one live highlighting each. That is true. That is very true. I could. So I will see what the majority rule is. And then I will pick that maybe for tomorrow. No promises, but that's my kind of idea right now. So, okay, great. Well, thank you guys so much for joining. I'm going to let you go. And if you're watching this right now, Kathy is going live at noon, I think, on her channel. So you can head over and watch her. Oh, color combo. Yes, I will try and do that today. They're not the prettiest. So, but I will try and do that today. I promise you guys, I will try and do that today. Thank you guys. I just got to find my um, finish button. <laughs> so... Thank you for stopping by. Have a great day and I'll see you again soon.